Hi, this is Anthony from UDR. I found kind of an interesting thing in Logic Pro 10 the other night while I was just playing around with the new drummer feature. So I'm going to create a new file, new project, just to show you how easy it is to do this just right from the get-go. So drummer is one of those features that a lot of people were like, oh my god, it's like prosumer, garage band pro, they, they've ruined Logic. But I just wanted to show you some interesting things that you can actually do with the feature that on first impression seems like something that's not very customizable and doesn't really seem very pro. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new drummer track here. So we start out with these uh, with these default guys. This guy's Kyle, you know, he's a rock drummer. Um, and it puts these couple regions up here just as default. So I'm gonna go ahead and just delete those. Now, if you open up the global tracks, you are gonna be able to add these new arrangement sections and just start clicking on them. Make sure you'll just usually default to intro, verse, verse, verse. And I'll go ahead and change this to chorus. This one I'll just I'll make into my bridge. I'm just gonna make this as simple as I can for right now. Um, shorten that down a little bit. Uh, there's a reason I'm doing this. Um, you'll see in just a second. Okay, so these you can't really, these are like glued together. You can't really adjust them. You can do that in the regions. So if you want to like make a verse shorter or longer or have like a drop in the beat or whatnot, you can do that. Make my pencil tool command, old school logic habit. Okay, so yeah, these this new global track feature will let you create those arrangement tracks. Now you just start dropping these in. You gotta click on the first bar though, otherwise it'll stick them in in the wrong spot. Um, but as long as you hit the first bar, it'll put them in there. Okay, now see that bridge, it made it short. And that's because we had that thing. All right, so now if we want to like have a little drop right before the verse, just go ahead and move that back bar or one beat. So I'm going to go ahead and play this real quick just so you can get an idea. Yeah, so, and drummer actually recognizes that, that gap and will change the way it plays. So you, you can have these interactive drops and whatnot. And this is all very garage band kind of stuff right now. We go ahead and set up the cycle. There we go. So I'm gonna set up the cycle to two bars just so we can play with this intro piece here. Now, this is like total rock band thing going on here. I do not like it at all. I'm an electronic musician and I need something, you know, more dance floor kind of beat. Um, Nikki says, hey, I'm, I love disco and I was a DJ, um, whatever. But anyway, this part's important. If you do a lot of what I was, what I'm going to show you, and then you go back here and you change drummers, it wipes it all out. So you need to make sure that before you actually change drummers or, you know, find a drummer that you like before you start doing the rest of this tutorial. Otherwise, you're just going to be back at square one and nobody wants to be at square one. All right. So going to play her and you know with these controls you can change the hi-hats you know find a you know rhythm that you like you can go with two and you throw in a snare so yeah they're a real basic you know disco intro eh, maybe she has better disco than I thought uh, you can adjust the complexity throws in a little bit extra but for the sake of this demo I'm just gonna I'm gonna move it back over to, to relatively simple so you're stuck with these these prefab drum kits which you can change there but also open up the library it's gonna show you so we've got all these these drum kits over here but we want to switch it to a drum machine it's really interesting what happens when we do that so I'm gonna grab my oh, dump splash that'll work now, it converts that drummer track into a track stack based on the UltraBeat plugin. So you can see this little box here with the arrow, and you can open it up. Now, if you play this, not only do you have the new sound, but everything is broken up for you. So you can actually mix and master this drum track. It's not just one big mush of, of drums on one track that you really can't do a whole lot with. There are options within Drummer that lets, that lets you affect 
the drums add compression and whatnot, but this is much easier to work with. So here you can see you can add in, you know, all your individual effects as, as need be. You can throw some compressor on a snare or whatnot. I'm not going to mess with that right now. So let's close the library for now. We don't need that. And you can hear the new, the new instrument going, the new drum kit. Now the first part has some weird bass thing in it, so I'm just going to mute that right now. So if I double click on this drummer region, it'll still bring the drummer back up and I can still make adjustments to it. So if you want to change your hi-hats around or change the complexity, I'm going to go ahead and simplify this just for the sake of demonstration. Okay, so here's the really great part. Right-click on these regions, go down to Convert, go over to Convert to MIDI region, and this is going to change this yellow, useless, garage band like region into something that we can actually work with. So I can open this up with the piano roll and just start plugging stuff in there. But if I wanted to make some more changes, I can go back and convert it back into a drummer region. And I actually took my cymbals out, so let me go ahead and put the cymbals back in. And I'll convert. And I'll convert this back into MIDI. There we go. Right click, convert, convert to MIDI region. And bam. And this will actually bring the piano roll up on the bottom for us automatically. So let me bring that up a little bit. And now this is just like a regular MIDI region, like anything else you'd be working with, you know, in any other DAW. So now we just go ahead and throw some extra snares in there. Throw an extra kick in. Let me, yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's good enough. So I'm going to play that real quick. And you can hear, you know, that I've changed that around a little bit. And it's actually, you know, it's this MIDI is actually playing on all these separate tracks in this track stack. So it's totally mixable. It's just, I love the way that works. And it's probably not the way I would do it, you know, if I was doing it from scratch. But to take something that, you know, was a major gripe that people didn't like about the way Logic 10 was, you know, portrayed and then, you know, convert that into something that's actually useful is, I think it's very cool that you can do that. And all of these features, I mean, it, this stuff's all documented. I mean, you know, the convert audio to MIDI, I mean, this does it much better because these, these drummer tracks are actually MIDI. They're just hiding <laughs> behind this, this fake audio. Being able to, to do this is, is, I think, is just very cool. And, you know, I wanted to give you guys the layout from the A to B to C to D. So, you know, if you were feeling like, you know, hey, I, I want to, you know, I can't think of like a, you know, a cymbal track or snare groove. And, you know, I want to play with drummer and have drummer give me some ideas or, you know, give me some sort of input, I guess you would say. You can do that with your own instrument set. You can do it to a way that you can edit it afterwards. You can just copy that, that MIDI right out of that region. You can use the region as is, you know, pretty much whatever you want to do. And I think it's a very powerful tool to be able to get, have access to uh, that was hidden behind a very garage band like feature. So this is my first tutorial. It probably will be my last. I, I don't find very many little things I feel the need to share with the world. Uh, but thanks for watching, and uh, if you enjoyed it, share it. If it was helpful, let people know, and thank you very much. All right. If this tutorial was helpful for you, uh, that is wonderful, and I would love it if you would share it and let other people know about some of these little quirky features that you can find in Logic uh, that may be helpful to their writing process. If you've enjoyed this tutorial and you want to hear what I do as a musician, please head over to udronline.net. There's a link below, and uh, give it a listen. Thanks a lot, guys.